Lazy Jack. Hello, this is Natasha, and I'm dropping by with a very old tale from Yorkshire, which is in the north of England. It was collected by James Orchard Halliwell Phillips. It's about a boy who really didn't want to do any work, and when he did, he got into a bit of a muddle. Once upon a time, there was a boy whose name was Jack, and he lived with his mother in a dreary cottage. They were very poor, and the old woman earned a few pennies by spinning. But Jack was so lazy that he would do nothing but bask in the sun in the hot weather and sit by the corner of the fire in the winter time. His mother could not make him do anything for her, until at last she warned him that if he did not begin to work for his porridge, she would turn him out of the house to get his living as best he could. This threat finally stirred Jack, and he went out and found a job for the day working on a farm. The farmer paid him one penny, but he was not used to having money, and as he was coming home, he lost it as he passed over a stream. You stupid boy, said his mother. You should have put it in your pocket. Next time I will, replied Jack. The next day, Jack went out again and found a job with a cowkeeper who gave him a jar of milk for his day's work. Jack took the jar and put it into the large pocket of his jacket spilling it all long before he got home. Oh, dear me, said the old woman. You should have carried it on head. Next time I will, replied Jack. The following day, Jack found a job with a farmer who agreed to give him cream cheese for his work. In the evening, Jack took the cheese and went home with it on his head. But by the time he got home, the cheese was completely spoiled, part of it being lost and part matted with his hair. You good-for-nothing boy, said his mother. You should have carried it very carefully in your hands. Next time I will, replied Jack. The day after this, Jack went out again and found a job with a baker who would give him nothing for his work but a large tomcat. Jack took the cat and began carrying it very carefully in his hands. But in a short time, Tommy scratched him so much that he was forced to let it go. When he got home, his mother said to him, You silly fellow, you should have tied it with a string and dragged it along after you. Next time I will, replied Jack. The next day, Jack hired himself to a butcher, who rewarded his labours by the handsome present of a shoulder of lamb. Jack took the meat, tied it to a string, and trailed it along after him in the dirt, so that by the time he had got home, the meat was completely spoilt. His mother this time completely lost her patience with him, for the next day was Sunday, and she had to make do with cabbage for her dinner. You nincompoop, she said to her son. You should have carried it on your shoulder. Next time I will, replied Jack. On the Monday, Jack went out once more and found a job with a cattle keeper who gave him a donkey for his trouble. Although Jack was very strong, he found some difficulty in hoisting the donkey on his shoulders, but at last he managed it and began walking slowly home with his prize. Now it happened that in a house along his way, there lived a rich man with his only daughter, a beautiful girl, but unfortunately deaf and dumb. She had never really laughed in her life, and the doctor said she would never recover till somebody made her laugh. Many had tried without success, 
and at last the father, in despair, said he would offer her hand in marriage to the first man who could make her laugh. The young lady happened to be looking out of the window when Jack was passing with a donkey on his shoulders, the legs sticking up in the air, and the sight was so comical and strange that she burst out into a great fit of laughter and immediately recovered her speech and hearing. Her father was overjoyed and kept his promise by marrying her to Jack, who was thus made a rich gentleman. They lived in a large house, and Jack's mother lived with them in great happiness until she died. And that's the story of Lazy Jack by James Halliwell Orchard Phillips. I do hope you enjoyed it.